Hello, 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 white America, assassinate my character Money matrimony, yeah, they tryna break the marriage up Who gon' act phony, yeah, who gon' try to embarrass ya yeah? I'ma need a day off, I think I call Ferris up Bueller had a Mueller, but I switched it for a Miele Cause I'm richer, and prior to this shit was moving freebase Had a conference with the DJs, yeah. Puerto Rico three days That approach, I had a, I had an already made <clears throat> a 30 second approach, a 30 minute approach, a three second approach, just because at that time I had just dropped every single thing. I had just, I had just stepped out on faith. Right. And it was, it was basically swim or sink for me at that time. So I felt like the, the easiest thing I can do coming from the profession that I was already in mm -hmm. was start a conversation. And if I started that conversation, it'd just flow. You, you talked about changing professions, like, you know, what was that transition like? It was scary because I went from the security of knowing for a fact all I have to do is show up at work, I'm gonna get paid and I'm gonna be able to support my family to saying, if I don't show up at work, I'm not getting paid. So how am I gonna support my family? Just that anxiety of not knowing. Not, not not knowing what I was really walking into. Not knowing if people were really gonna like the haircuts. Like having faith in myself, but still underestimating myself. What is it like to just even reflect on it? Like what? Like I, what are some of the things that come to mind? You in, know, I actually I actually was thinking about that the other day. That's I'm glad you said something. Um, I just told my wife. I said. You know, I'm blessed because I listen to God. Like, I feel like this is God's reward. Because some people struggling, like in these times, a lot of people struggling. And God continuously, continuously blessing me. So I feel like that's, that's this my reward. So I'm glad I made this step. Because now I see how his mercy goes. What do you think is like the difference between somebody motivating you and somebody inspiring you? Um... I, be I believe that you have to have that. I can't inspire myself because I am myself. Right. So my standards for myself is already is already normal to me. Right. You dig? So I look for inspiration in other things and uh, in other people's actions. As far as motivating, I have to make I have to tell myself like I have to convince myself I can do something. Nobody else can convince me to do nothing. Right. You know, some people, I think that with that statement, some people will see it different because they want people to tell them what to do and how to do it. Right. Versus... They want to see a blueprint. They want to see a blueprint print and they want it to work out exactly how how it's written, how it's formed. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I think that the, the, the biggest difference is the mindset of... the mindset of the two words, of the two things. How you take it. But I, I definitely feel like as far as the inspiration, mm -hmm. um, you gotta find inspiration on the outside. And, mm -hmm. and and I can be I can be that's perspective though. Right, know? yeah. That's my sure. opinion. For sure. Um Yeah, that that's just my opinion. Because when you when you talk about and it's crazy me bringing all of this stuff up because I was just if you look at my notes, I was just writing on uh the perspective of the standards of people mm -hmm. and how standards we, co we we compare ourselves amongst ourselves right mm -hmm. so when we look at somebody else's standards we compare it to ours and if it's not ours we like perspective mm -hmm. you understand you, you dig that yeah i think being at this age and i'm at it's i'm still trying to figure those things out i'm still trying to fit you know i'm still trying to Fully identify my purpose, fully identify who I am as a person, like who is Javon? If I can't figure those things out for myself, I'm going to be trapped in this situation where the only sense of purpose I'm going to feel like I have mm -hmm. is to be ahead of somebody else. And that's, that's not, that's never going to be, you know, the right answer. Yeah. You go as far back as, what is, what is his name, Babe Ruth? Mm -hmm. You know, they, they say, oh my God, most home runs ever. Mm -hmm. But they don't, they, that's what they give us. They don't give us that. He also had the most strikeouts, too. Right. 
So they don't let you see the they don't let you see the ugly side. They show you the pretty side. So I think that's been the mindset of people in general. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that'll ever be broken. Right. And that's just me because it's generational. You right. Know? It all, it, it all depends on your perspective and how you how you see these things. You know, you above you you ahead of your time. I always say that you ahead of your time. So, I, I think that as far as those people go, it have to come from inside of them to actually mm. not care and and to say, okay, they got it. Not now, I want that, but let me figure out how to get it my way and understand that you know the the it's it's going to be. I always tell my son, I said, the goal is always going to be the same. The journey, is, but the journey is always going to change. Right. So you can you can have this, you can have this house at the end of, at the end of your block, mm -hmm. but to get there, you got to go through hell and high water. You know? Right. And I think that has to be understood before you can actually say, I want this, because if you don't understand that part, if you don't understand the ugly part. I think that you're gonna always drown. You're gonna always, always drown. So, so for the people that don't think like you, I would, I would definitely say. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. Yeah, that's... I mean, because I can't tell, I, you can't tell people how to think. And right. although we want to say do it this way, do it that way, it don't happen like that. Some people have to fall. Right. Do you feel like you made more of a difference as a cop? Or do you feel like you're making more of a difference today? Mm. That's a good one. That's a good one. That one, I have to think on that one. Yeah. Because as a cop, I didn't cop. I didn't police. Mm. I, I, I still did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I still went out. I still talked to the homeless. I still wanted to know people's story. Wanted people to know my story. So right. the same thing I did as a cop. I definitely did. I'm doing now, so I think that I think that I, I my purpose is to reach people, mm -hmm. and I did it in both professions. You did right. See, my 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 thing was I I have a different when I was a cop. Mm -hmm. um, I had to make a lot of decisions based on perspective, mm -hmm. right? I we go out. We always go back to that because to me. Perspective is the biggest thing in life. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's mental health. It's how you see things. So, I've always looked at things and you know made decisions off of perspective. So, I do that in life. Also, with my regular with, with my regular life, you know, mm -hmm. I always face things off of perspective. So when I was a cop, it was easy for me to talk to people. Now, some some of some people out there. You can't talk to them, but, but I knew that. I knew that, so I handled them. I handled them different, you know. Right. Um. I think with doing this and and being a cop, I still. I don't know. I, I think I still. My purpose stays the same. Right. The things that the, the things I'm doing change, but my purpose stays the same. My purpose was to to inspire, to actually be inspired. Right. You know. That's why I talk to my clients. That's why I talk to. A lot of people out on the streets just because something like a lot of homeless people, a lot of homeless people, man, inspired me today, made me do this. Like I was, I would tell them, you know, my plans as far as leaving, doing all of that. And every single day they ask me, why are you still here? Why are you still here? Why are you still here? You know, I get in the fight. And after the fight, I, I always believe that the best basketball player is not on the court. Best football player is not on the field. The person that gives me the best advice don't have a, a business suit on or a, a clipper in their hand. Right. We look for, we look for people that goes back to status and people not telling you the journey. They just showing you. You know. Right. We look up to these people with money, and we want advice for them from them. They probably get their advice from the same people that we we shunning away. You know. So mm -hmm. I take. I try to take things out of every single, every single, I don't care what you have on, I don't care your economic situation, I don't care about nothing. If it could benefit me, if your words, what you're telling me could benefit me, I definitely, I'm going to definitely take it. It may not stick. I'm going I'm to ponder on it, I'm going to think about it, and if it does stick, I'm going to use it, you know. Some things, some things I don't take, they were good advice, but it wasn't good for my situation. So that discernment 
is is how it's I, I think that discernment got me through a lot of situations, a lot of times where I could have, you know, put my hands on somebody as a cop. Mm -hmm. You know, I understood their situation. I understand. I understand. That's why I'm, I'm, I wasn't a... <laughs> I think I was a good cop, but I didn't... My mindset wasn't being a cop. My mindset was, like I said earlier, to inspire. You know, mm -hmm. I, I definitely look at people and say, well, damn... I understand why you out here doing what you're doing. Right. I'm not saying that it's right. I don't have to agree with it, but I understand it. Instead of reacting on what I was taught, you know, mm -hmm. something is out of line, you go at it. They don't. They don't teach us. They don't teach us how to how to DS to to talk somebody down. Right. Because they want us to act. So that comes from you though. Right, and within. That's, that comes from within. I feel like, and that's why a lot of um, a lot of situations that's happening now in the world is built off of that person's character, not because they have bad cops. You have a bad, you have bad doctors. You have bad people in general. So when you have, when you put it in your head that you don't want to be a bad person, that's when things are gonna stop. I don't think that no one person can change what's going on right now. With oh people. yeah. I, I think no one system can. Right. Because I don't believe that you can change people. Right. You would have to legit, you know, I hear people saying, give them a more extensive uh, psychological exam and this and that. They just have bad people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that is, that, that's innate from, that's innate in you from, from birth. Right. The messed up part about it all is when, when that happens, there's typically no justice for it. Mm -hmm. So the bigger picture here is, What's embedded into American culture, what's embedded into the system that, you know, might not necessarily live in this person's heart because now that, you know, now that we have, you know, these cops that, are, that have, done, you know, done what, done what they did, and you want to hate the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know for a fact that, you know, not every single cop is a bad cop. Mm -hmm. A lot of these cops who do join, try to join for the right reason. You can say the same thing about a politician. A politician who you know, may not have came from much, can get into the game of politics, and the whole time that they dreamed of becoming a politician, they wanted to do it for the right reason. Yeah. They get into it, they have an agenda. When they get into it, thinking that they're running their own agenda, there's a much bigger overarching agenda that's led behind the system, and now somehow, that you know, they're a part of that. And it's like, it's so hard to differentiate the two because you start hating the system and anything that, th that has to do with it. Yes. I think you have to understand also, you know, um, going back, I'm going to touch on two things that you said as far as, you know, why why are these cops going free? You got to think about the establishment of a police. Mm -hmm. Why why were police created? You know, so it, it already had a set, they already had the blueprint. Why, why are these cops created? To catch slaves, mm -hmm. right? From the jump. From the jump. So they already had the blueprint. So over time, they had to tweak it to make it, you know what I'm saying? They, they had to tweak it to make it go with the times. The rules, basically, is what I'm talking about. Right. And those rules had to change. Because when you look at, you know, the criminal co code and procedure of, of Texas, I'm going to speak on Texas because I was a Texas cop. Okay. It's words in there that I can kill everybody in this room. And it's it's words in there and not even and not being a cop. It's words in there that can protect me and then my lawyer can argue on. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it's already built for, for us to be regardless of what side you on, you know, it was already built for to destroy us. Right. So that's one thing and and I think that's why a lot of cops, you know, get off. From, from from doing that because it's all you have to do is tweak some words. You gotta make it look good. I always tell people you just put some sugar on it. You know, make it sweet and that's what they do with with, with the laws that they abide by. Um, as far as how can you go into a system being good, you know, I, I told you the good parts of, of my my police mm -hmm. but I didn't tell you that I was getting sucked in too. 
Right. You just have to know when to walk out. Right, right. Because right. everything becomes so normal to you. Right. You know, I go you on the street. You become a part of it. You become a part of it. And you don't even know that you were part of it until something big happens. You right. know, my, my, my turning point was, um, and I don't know if y'all want to use this or not, but I'm being extra vulnerable and transparent. My turning point was, I had a situation, a guy, uh, he was handcuffed, uh-huh. handcuffed, and he tried to spit on me. Mm-hmm. And I reacted not as a cop. Right. I reacted as a human, human being. You know. Yeah. And I choked him. You were a woman first. I choked him, but he was handcuffed, cut handcuffed, and I knew for a fact. After I did it, I went in the bathroom and I cried and I said, "This is it." But that second of me acting as a human would have made me a bad cop. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yep. And I know that I'm not a bad human like that. I know that. My reaction could have changed everything that day. Right. So, even though I didn't go there with the intentions to do it, right, I was sucked in. Right. But I had that discernment to know that I have to go because this is going to be bad. Yep. Because people bring you to that, whether you have a badge on or not. People bring you in a split second can change your life. Right. A, a split second can make you a bad cop, a bad doctor, a bad you know politician, whatever it is. Right. Because it's it's normal in your world. You know, cop, what cops do isn't normal in regular civilian world. You get what I'm saying? But in the cop world, it's normal. So you in that and you in that nor, that normality every day. Right. So you being you doing this and nobody saying that you are wrong, you gonna think it's right. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You understand that? Yeah. Not saying that all of them, you know, act off human instincts. Some of them act off of hate also. Oh, for sure. Know? But. I don't speak on it because who are we to say which instinct they're acting off of? You right. Get? And I know that in a how in a split second, somebody can change your mind. I know in a split second, situations can change your mind. Mm-hmm. So, and I know in a split second how fear can change your mind also. So you got two scared entities. You got cops and you got black men, black women, mm-hmm. and you put them both in the same room. You go, it's, it's disaster because you got so much fear going on. Regardless of, of what we say as, as people, cops fear black people. And I know that in a, how in a split second somebody can change your mind. I know in a split second situations can change your mind. Mm-hmm. So, And I know in a split second how fear can change your mind also. So you got two scared entities. You got cops and you got black men, black women. Mm-hmm. And you put them both in the same room. You go, it's, it's disaster. Because you got so much fear going on. Regardless of, of what we say as, as people, cops fear black people. Cops mm-hmm. feel fear, people feel fear people. You know yep. what I'm saying? So how, I think I think if, it, if it's going to be any type of change, it has to come from, I don't even know if it can be changed, to be real with you. Because right. like I always say, you can't change people. Right. You know, you can, you can, you can, I think, I think y'all kids, y'all kids' kids going to be the change. Right. Because a lot of people, a lot of us are waking up now. And we're teaching our kids certain things. And we're teaching how, you know, and, and I'm going to even say on, on other cultures. There's even Some of them teaching their kids hate, but some of them are really teaching their kids that this is what it is. People are people. And when you get the majority of people growing up saying people are people, I think that violence in, in itself is going to stop. You know, I saw something. I saw something today. It was about title. It was um, they were they were basically giving us the numbers on how much money do they pay people per hundred and a hundred thousand streams. Uh-huh. I think Spotify pays like four hundred. A uh, four hundred Apple Music pays six hundred, and um, Title was giving away like twenty three hundred per stream. Yeah. Wow. And and you know what? It's black owned. Yeah. Why don't why yeah. are we not shifted towards that? Yeah. We we all yeah. want to go for yeah. You know yeah. What's controlled by yeah. some not not by us. We don't mm-hmm. we don't gravitate towards the stuff that's controlled by us, which is a a big part of the reason why you know as we think about how do we get out of this, that has to become a part of it. We hate each other so much. We hate each other so much to where we, like they say, crabs in a bucket. But it's perspective on how you take that crap in the book. Right. You know? A young black, you know, 
entrepreneurs, so to speak, wants to start their own business. They trying to take it off the ground. Nobody might not comment under it and say it, but he, he go, they gonna have haters yeah. that look just like him. Yeah. That are gonna sit there and you know pray on his downfall. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to see you succeed because yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my life. Yep. Yeah. And that's how it usually goes. That's how, that's exactly how it usually goes. I'm a hater. I'm a, I'm gonna push your down. I'm gonna be a part of your downfall because I don't want you to because I don't know what I want to do. Right. And I don't want you to look or do it better than me. Mm-hmm. Goes back to that. Just comparing yourself. Yep. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Having a little bit of support will do for a person. Right. If I know that, you know, not just my friends, but there's people who genuinely support what I got going on, even if right now my product and my service is, is shitty, but you know I'm ambitious about it, you know yep. I'm hungry for yep. it. If I just had that support, maybe that'll make all the difference. Yep. Maybe that's what's gonna make me end up being the most successful business owner. Yep. Everybody, you know, we all we all want to be tough skin and say, you know, the haters is is, is a good thing, but in reality, it, that shit. Ain't. It ain't. Yeah. <laughs> the devil was a hater. Right. She. When is ain't. when is hate ever a good thing for a yep. person? Yep. But that's what we were taught. Right. Have haters. Get a lot of haters. That means you're doing something right. Right. Nah. I don't think that. I definitely don't think that. Same. It's a big part of it, though. It's a big. It's a big part of why we, you know, why we're in the situation we're in. Why, why we can't really come together. And I'm not gonna say we can't, but why we haven't. Yeah. Why we haven't come together yeah. so far. I, I think if that's a curse, we can break as people. And we do start to support each other. We'll see a big shift. I think, and, and one thing we have to realize, I'm gonna you said something. You said, you know, I, my friends support me. I have other people support me. But I feel like, uh, and this is my advice to you, starting yeah. off being a business person, you have to understand your audience. Mm -hmm. Not everybody for you. I always say that. When people ask me how much I charge to cut hair, mm -hmm. and I tell them, and they like, oh, I can't afford that. I'm not right. for you. So trigger the, Take over your lane. Take over the lane that you created. I don't care if you have eight views a day. Right. Entertain those eight people. Right. You know, because now you know that you got eight people that support you. And right. in turn, somebody going to support everything they do, so they're going to support you. You know, you just have to enjoy the journey. Like, it's a journey of, It's a journey to the top. You know, jay Z still trying to get to the top. Right. Because even though we hear billionaire, his goals are, are, are more... Are, are, uh, or what's the word I'm looking for? On a wider range than some of ours, because he's touched more things than we've touched. You know, right. he's seen a lot of stuff. Right. So, I think that you should conquer your audience mm -hmm. and go from there. Don't worry about somebody else. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about who's going to support you. I don't care if I don't care if I have one person that comes to me a week. Right. I'm gonna make sure, and you know it. I spend an hour, hour and a half on your hair just to make sure. It's perfect, right? Because I'm st I'm I'm giving you something, and if I can help one person, I'm gonna help one person. I'm okay. Oh yeah, and, and it and it's a two way street too. You know, you you pointed out one one thing about your business. I said it from the beginning. You know, the way you approached me was one thing. Your actual service, actually going to go get a haircut, the experience of getting a haircut, was phenomenal. You know, every time that's how I feel. Every time I show up. I appreciate that. I appreciate oh, for sure. That. When people do business, you know, we we definitely have to work on our tendencies to do, you know, to do better business, to be better, you know, business owners, business doers, give people the right service because, yeah. you know, we all we all do truly. I think in our hearts, we I can say all of us, but a lot of us do want to support each other. But if you ain't got good service with your business or you're not a good business doer, I don't want to yeah. do business with you. Yep. Yeah. That's why I'm a, I keep going back to the businesses that I trust because they give me good service. Yep. I, I'm paying my money for it. So if I'm putting my money up, I expect good business. Yep. Um, so that's why I say it's two-way street. Like you can't just you can't just come in there and, and think that, you know, because I say I have a business right. that it's gonna pop, everybody's right. gonna support me. If you right. if you do truly want people to support your yep. business, have a vision, have it, you know, have a have a purpose of why you're doing it yep. and lead with that. That should be it. You know, your business is a representation of who you are yep. as a person. Every single time. I yep. always say this to myself. When you walk out of here, 
I, my appointments are so long because when you walk out, you are you are me. Right. I'm going with you wherever you go, and I want to be represented represented very well. Yep. Every single time. That's why people used to. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I used this, I had to teach a, uh, a class one, one day, oh. and I used this in, in barber school. Um, they used to talk about me, man, so bad. Oh, she can cut, but she take two hours on the head. Uh. She take two hours on the head. So I said, I used to like beat myself up, like try to go faster. Right. But then I sat back and I said, I'm going to brand myself off of taking two hours to cut a hair. Right. And now that I've, I've took what they were saying about me and turned it into something that I'm making money off of, right. now they're coming to me and say, how do you do it? Right. Because I turned I turned everything y'all was saying about me when y'all thought my music was off in my ears and I heard y'all. Right. I turned that into to something that's making me money now. Right. I brand, I, I brand myself off taking at least an hour and a half, you know, uh -huh. on every every head. I don't care right. if it's a, a taper fade, a beard. Uh -huh. Yesterday I had a, one beard. Nothing else, just a beard. Was it, uh, minutes. Was it spirits? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah. Um, you be having them on the show looking good, I heard. That's what I saw on your story. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. That's but people brother. see that, though. Yeah. And I, same thing with him. People think I, I just do it to, I, I just take that long on certain people. Uh, I take that long because that's my brand. Right. Because when you walk out of here, you're going to feel amazing. I'm going to feel amazing because some, and you're going to bring me at least six other people. Right. And people don't want to go through that. They don't, they're not willing to sacrifice time. They're not willing to give things away. Right. You know, you got to always give away to get something. Oh, something yeah. in return. Especially in business. When you're trying to run your own business, mm -hmm. I still give free haircuts to women. I don't care, man. God is blessing me. Oh yeah, yeah. And you and you bless the game more than once. I know Always. I know anytime I've ever any you know what? This is this is why I appreciate you the most. Anytime that I've gone to your shop, when I was younger, like, you know, a couple years back, you used to always tell me, you know, if if, if you feel like you ain't got it or you know, this or that, just let me know. I'm gonna cut you off for free. There were times when you've offered a free haircut uh -huh. for the simple fact. You know, like those are things that go a long way with more than just a, you know, a business. It, yep. It's literally like, I don't want you to just feel like we're just handling business. I want you to feel like, yo, I, I got you back. I got you always, yeah. always. That's just me as a person. Right. And, I, and I ain't tooting my own horn because I ain't, I'm a, I, I was, I was very, very poor when I was coming up. Right. Very poor. Like right. I didn't have a toilet until I was nine. Mm. We used the outhouse. I don't even know if y'all know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and but I and, and when I was younger, I was in a picture, so I didn't I didn't take full advantage of it. You right. know, I just wanted a life like my like my, my like my friends. Mm. But as a as I got older, I started appreciating that because we was we was very poor, but we had so much love. And I know how to I know how to genuinely love somebody. Mm. And I'm grateful for my grand for the village that raised me. You know, a mm. lot of people had a lot of things to do with my upbringing. And I'm glad that they gave me love. So I know right. how to love people, and it, it teaches me how to treat people also. Right. A lot of people had a lot of things coming up, but they liked love. I had I didn't have nothing coming up, but I, I think I know how to love. That's huge. A lot of us don't even, it seem as if, I think everybody has it in them to love. But a lot of us, we don't we don't love things the way we should love yep. things. Or love yes. people the way we should love people. Yep. We pick and choose depending on how much you benefit from Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how it goes. Right. right? <laughs> but, but I think, you know, love is all about mutual benefit. Yep. 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 For sure. What do you, what do you think? You're one of the few, you know, Woman barbers, I know. I don't know too many woman barbers. Uh -huh. What do you think? You know, like how did you go from what you were doing, transitioning, and stay confident in your ability to do that and have clientele, knowing that there weren't many of you. Like knowing that there, were, I mean, nobody's tree. Right. But like knowing that there there weren't many other women barbers out there that were doing it at this level. Um. 
it's funny you say that because I've never put myself in that boat. Yeah. So I never, I just wanted to cut hair. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be this good. I, when I, sometimes I see my pictures, I'm like, yeah, damn. I did that. That's good. You know? <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's no, it's no, I didn't put myself in a box. Right. I, I encourage male barbers, female barbers. I, I, I wanted to encourage barbers, period, right. across the spectrum. You know, so was it hard for me? Yes, it was. A lot of people, when I first started cutting at AP, nobody wanted to sit in my chair. Right. Because for one, I was new. For two, I looked like I was 12. And for three, I was a woman. You know, nobody oh, yeah. wanted women in their head. Right. So that was hard for me. So I did have to prove myself. You know? But you just didn't really even think about it. I didn't think about it. Yeah. I didn't think about it. I was, man, I went from bringing home as a cop one week at least 23 to 2500 every two weeks mm -hmm. to bringing home $25 a day from barbering. Right. So it was very stressful. It was stressful, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it was, it was a struggle. so stressful. Yeah. But I set standards for myself, yep. within myself, and I didn't look outside of that. And, I, and, and another thing that got me, too, um, but I take this as a plus. When 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 I when I speak of comparing, mm -hmm. I used to look at I didn't know nothing about enhancement. Right. So I used to look at Instagram and be like, damn, how they how do they and, and I knew nothing about editing either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm like, they are so good. So I used to that's why it takes me two hours to cut a hair because I want my my I try to paint my picture. I, I didn't know what they were doing until right. I got in the business and was like, well, damn. Yeah. I I just compared myself to a machine, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's why I take so long. because I and, But I still go with that. I don't think that was a bad thing mm -hmm. because I took it as a good thing, you know? Yep. You grew up in Louisiana, right? Mm -hmm. uh, New Orleans? Um, I moved to New Orleans when I was 17. Okay. I grew up in a very small country town outside of New Orleans, around Lafayette. Uh, uh, like south, like southwest of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Like I'm further down. Like you know how New Orleans sit in that cup. Yeah. If you go down, I'm like on this part of the cup. Yeah. So around the time when Katrina hit. Mm -hmm. Um, that was scary for me. I was in New Orleans at the time. Um, we had just got what? Up. Yeah, yep. Shit. Um, my wife actually worked for NOPD um, dispatchers, uh, so she couldn't leave. But I left that Sunday. She made me leave. I was gonna stay in the hotel. The hotel actually uh, got blown away through Katrina. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was gonna stay in the hotel downtown just so I wouldn't have to leave her because she couldn't she couldn't come. And the flooding started on Tuesday. So up until Tuesday we talking. We had Nextel phones. I don't know if y'all know what Nextel is, but it was a <laughs> the little chirp phones. So um it was a uh, we was talking, 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 talking. Then she told me she said, uh, we have to go in, they put them in a hotel downtown so they can have access to work. Mm -hmm. So she was like, we're going in, I'll talk to you later. That was on Tuesday morning. She was like, it's flooding, but it's not really flooding, right? Mm -hmm. Probably about 9 a.m., she hit me up. She was like, they about to get us out of here on boats. The levees then broke, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Now it's Tuesday. From that time to, from that time to Friday, I didn't speak to her one time. The last thing I heard from her, she she getting on a boat. So she was on a boat, and I'm watching the news, and I'm seeing what's going on on these boats, right? Yeah. I'm calling, I'm calling. Um, I slept. I slept for three days straight. I didn't get out of the bed. I was. That's Damn. the first time I experienced the depression because I'm seeing people dying. I'm seeing. I'm hearing what's going on on the news. Yeah. And I still haven't talked to my wife. That was very scary. But Friday, um, she hit me up. Her uncle is a cop in, in New Orleans. So she hit me up and she was like, hey, meet me in Baton Rouge right now. So I left. I was in my hometown. I left. I met her in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And the stories that she told me, like the things that she experienced, I, I couldn't, I don't know, I probably would have just jumped in the water and just 
<laughs> just yeah. blown it away. Just gave up. Like knowing she experienced that type of trauma and she can still move. Just not her. People in New Orleans, period, in that during that time, experiencing that type of trauma. All right. That was that was something I've never I've never witnessed. To be that strong. Yep. So it was it was super, super scary. It was it was it was scary, yeah. And then going back to see once everything was over with, going back to see uh, my things. Yeah. That was heartbreaking because, like damage. I said, I was. We had just moved into that apartment. Yeah. I was excited. I had put all my money into it. I was in college. Felt like I had been through everything. Everything. Everything that I worked hard for, I got thrown away. How, how did you result? Like, you know, that's something that for a lot of people is just defeating. Um, like never coming back, never coming, never going to, a lot of people probably felt like they'll never come back from that. But you, I, I, I say, I say this all the time. I didn't come from nothing anyway. Right. It destroyed me, but I knew how to get it back. Mm. That's why this pandemic, I tell people, I'm not afraid. I ain't, I ain't, I know what it is to have nothing at all. And a lot of people do, but a lot of that drives a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Money don't drive me. Right. You know, getting it back wasn't a problem. I knew how to get it. I knew I got it one time. I can get it two times. That was all, that's always been my mentality. Right. You know, community wise, community wise, like, would you say that had a lot to do with everybody kind of coming back and and being able to uplift each other? Because I think, I think in times of of like stressful situations, that that seems to be. One of the times where I do see the communities really coming together mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, leaving that mark on each other and showing love, those seem to be like the one times or the only times where, where we see it. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to know, like, was that, was that one of those, was that one of those times or one of those things that you can say had an impact on the way that you continue to love? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Community. I always say it takes a village. It takes a village to raise anything. Right. You can't have, you can't. You can't be a former and have and, and, do, and power field yourself. Right. You know, you need a community for everything, to grow anything. So I definitely think that that time was, it was a bad time, but it was a good time for people also to get back to that loving thing. Because society took us out of it. Yep. But I think that God always come back. When we, when we so far gone away from each other, mm -hmm. God find the reason to bring us all back together. Like now, you know, yep. the way the way that black people now, we as black people, as a black community are actually helping each other now, benefiting from it. Now, you still have those people that don't, you know, you still have the quote unquote haters. Right. But we've never experienced a time like this. And I'm not going to say in life, it's not in my life. You know, back in the days when, when, when black people was real, real millionaires. You know, that was a community that did that. Right. Whenever I get into this phase of I feel like I'm floating away, or I feel like I'm feel like I'm, you know, getting consumed by everything that's going on around me, I I, I circulate I circulate right to my family. Yep. And because you need that kind of love. Right. That's a different type of love. Oh yeah. That's oh. what I'm missing right now. Like I'm missing, you know, going home, being with my sisters. You know, I can't do it because of this pandemic. Right. But I have to make that move quick because I'm lacking that. Like that's a that's a different feeling for some people. Right. Some people can go without. I can't go without my family. Right, right, right. And and you know, people who are in the situation with the pandemic right now, since it started, since the lockdown, all you know, all, all of that that's been going on. That have their family right in front of them, uh -huh. that take full advantage. Yep. I ain't seen my family since January. Yep. I ain't, you know, my grandparents live in Waco. I can't go around them. Yep. I can't, I can't just pull up on them. I don't, you know, I don't want to get them sick. I live downtown. Right. And you know, thinking about my parents too, it's like I didn't really see my parents a whole lot through college as it was. My parents only visited me, I think, two times while I was in college. And I think they waited until my senior year, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, family is so big to me. Yeah. I always made the effort to go back home. Yeah. I always made the effort. Even if I only had $600, if I, yeah. you know, if it was winter break, 
I'm gonna spend, you know, that three, four hundred dollars to get to DC or to get to uh, Norfolk. Yeah. And I'm gonna go spend that time. And and you know, now I can't. I can't just I can't just do that. Yeah. I'm about to. But like for the longest it was like there's no way for me to spend time with them. Yeah. You know, luckily, fortunately my job is, you know, I'm able to work remote. I'm able to go home and spend that time. But you How know, long I, are you gonna go? Uh till December. Okay. But if I had that, if I had the ability to go to my parents in times like this, yep. that's the only place I'd be. Yep. Or just family in general, yep. whoever I consider family, just being around them. Yep. That's why that's why I think it's so important too to build great, strong, you know, friendships. Yep. Embedding people into your family, making making them family because when you ain't got family around, you need that. You, if I didn't have people that I consider family who were not a part of my family, I'd go crazy. Yep. Who am I supposed to feel like I'm loved around? Yeah, you die. I, I use that experiment a lot of times when I'm talking to people just about affection and love. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I read this um, where they had two lab rats, same age, fed them the same thing, um, did everything alike. Right. But they played with one of them every day, and they never showed the other one attention. Mm. Now, they had the same nutrients in their body. Everything mm. was exactly the same. Right. Weighed the same, everything. But the one that didn't get that attention died. Damn. Emotional attachments and emotional, like, that type of love in general, you have to feel that. You got to right. feel that. You have to have to feel it. And that family love, I feel like that's a, that's a must. But not everybody feel like that, you know, every. Everybody got their own thing about family. But like you said, even though that your family didn't come visit you in college, right? you still made the sacrifice because you know that's what you need to, to oh, get yeah. on, you know? Oh, yeah. And you understand why they didn't come. Like, I didn't, my mama didn't come to none of my basketball. I don't right. think my mama ever came to any of my basketball games. But before every game, she would, say, she would tell me something. And I took it with me as if she was there. She's right. never, I don't think, I honestly feel like my mama never came to none of my games. But I understood it. Right. That don't mean that don't mean I don't go home and see my mama cause you know what I'm saying? Like right. and I went home almost every weekend. Still went home. Yep. You know. Cause that's what I needed. You know, when when graduation came around, my mom came. And you know, I, I didn't grow up with my mom, so mm -hmm. you know, I love her to death. My, you know, my mom, I was a mama's boy when, when I was younger. But you know, when, when her situation kinda took off. And she, you know, she was living in poverty. She was dealing with what she was dealing with. Anytime there was something important that I wanted, you know, her to be there for, mm -hmm. a lot of times she'd make, you know, tell me I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. And then she wouldn't show up. Okay. So, you know, when I'm sitting there dealing with, dealing with that, that's a big, a big thing that I'm dealing with that, you know, I'm looking at everybody else, moms, pops, somebody is supporting them. Yeah. They, they got a support system in place. And, and you know, I, I can never take for granted the fact that I have my dad in my life. Because you know, without my dad, you know, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. But to sit there and think, like, when I when graduation came around, college graduation, and my mom said she was gonna be there, you know, I didn't put it past her that she could potentially not show up, but she did. Yeah. And yeah. just and just to be able to have that, like, have that type of situation where now I can literally look what's right in front of me and say. Yeah. Look who's here. I don't got to look at, you know, all these other graduates and their families. I'm sitting here just happy that mine is here. Right. Just happy that I can even say that, you know, my mom and my dad are in the same room. We're taking yeah. pictures together. Like, you know, I, if, if there was nothing else that, that made me excited to be a grown-ass man, it was that. Yeah. Because I just realized, like, the people who brought me in this world, they're here for probably my biggest accomplishment right. yet. Woo! Yeah. If you believe in me, bro.